Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at what's new in Adobe Illustrator CC for the 2014 release. That's right, Illustrator, just like all the other apps, have been getting regular updates along the way with Creative Cloud and it's time to do more. So let's jump right in. Now, in this particular Illustrator file, I've got three artboards and I've got some custom views saved just to quickly help me navigate to the views that I want to get to. So when I go to my first view, it just zooms in on the seating chart. And what I want to do here is just take a look at or just do a quick refresher on the live corner capability. So I've got four objects selected and of course I now get these handles that allow me to quickly and easily adjust the corners. So that's our live corners, but we've taken it up a notch. Let's go to my next view. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. And now for the, for the first time, when you draw a shape, whether it be a rectangle or ellipse or whatever, you get the ability to get live shapes. So when I draw out a rectangle, my transform panel opens up automatically. I still have the same handles, but now I can do this mathematically just as easily with the transform panel. So I can make that one a half um, inch round it, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, so forth and so on. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that shape because that was just a test. And now we'll leave the transform panel up. We'll jump to our third view, which is again, again zooms into the seating chart and we'll select all of the rectangles in that seating chart. And again, I could do it um, with the handles, but I'm gonna do it mathematically. Let's just go ahead and jump right in. Uh, we'll do point one on that first one. We'll do point two on the last, or actually, should be 0 0.02, there we go, 0 0.02, 0 0.02. So we can quickly and easily adjust the seating chart, multiple objects at the same time using the transform panel. All right, the next one we're, that we're gonna jump to, let's go to our view menu and let's go to the hair view of the second uh, artboard. I'll close my transform panel for now, I don't need it just yet. Uh, and now we'll go ahead and again, a quick refresher with the pencil tool. Now the print pencil tool got redefined in the last update for Illustrator. And of course it takes on a whole new meaning now. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's go to a blank canvas here where we can draw and we'll go ahead and switch our colors here. Let's go ahead and just toggle them and we'll make it no fill. That way I can draw um, more, much more easily on this blank canvas layer. All right, so now that I've got everything all set, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the pencil tool settings. Now, in the past, the pencil tool would have been on accurate, or that would have been your choice. You wouldn't have had a choice. That's what it was on. So the pencil tool tried to be very accurate as you drew things and gave you a, you know, a bunch of points everywhere your pencil or hes hesitated, you would get a kind of point. <laughs> it would basically look very jagged. And that's why people hated the pencil tool and didn't use it. Once you used it, you kind of swore it off, said I'll never use it again. Okay, so let's undo that. And now let's double click the pencil tool and move it all the way to the new option, smooth. And now again, with the same kind of gesture, I can, oops, let's go back up to the right layer. Same kind of gesture, I can get a much smoother path with the pencil tool. It kind of even auto-corrected and reduced the number of points. And if I don't like the way it ended, I can go, kind of come out and smooth it out some more because you can reshape strokes that you make with the pencil tool. So again, that was in the last update and it's kind of a prelude to what I'm gonna show you next, which is brand new and that is what we've done with the pen tool. Now the pen tool never got any awards for being easy to use. And in this version, I think people, more people than ever will be able to use the pen tool because what was the, the problem before is when you click the pen, first point and you went to go click or drag your next point, you didn't know what it was going to do if you were brand new to the pen tool. Now introducing pen tool preview. So for example, I can either click or click and drag and that will put down my first point. But now the minute I move away from it, I'm not holding down anything. It's giving me a preview of what that path is going to look like. So now I can, I can know exactly if I put down right here, it's gonna be a point there. If I come over here and kind of maybe, maybe wanna make it curved a little bit more, I can do it there. So I can be, have a much better success rate for the kind of paths that I want uh, if I 
Again, just look at the preview, see what the path's going to be, and then, of course, put it down. Now, I put down that last point, and, of course, I can just hit, hit the escape key to get out of it, letting it know that I'm finished. Okay, so with that said, what else is new? Well, we have the path segment tool, and this allows me now to, it was the anchor point conversion tool before, and it still is, but now when I drag on a path, this was in the last update, I can actually reshape that path. Okay, so again, that part of it is not new. What is new is more with the pen tool. So let's go back to the pen tool, and let's change our view. We're gonna zoom in a little bit more. Not quite that much. Let's zoom in a little bit more here. And we'll go up to our um, hair tip view. Now, in this particular view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to draw a heart. And I could never, ever do this with the pen tool before because I'm just not that good at it. But now I'm going to go ahead and start out in the center part at the top of the heart. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag up to make my first curve point. And again, I get that nice preview of the path letting me know, hey, if you want it curved, you might want to drag down from here. Okay, great. Now I'm going to drag the, or go ahead and click the bottom, and I'm already kind of off where I want to be, but that's okay. And now I'll click, and then this is where I would start to mess up, not know what to do next. I'll click and drag, and here's the beauty of it. Oh no, that's not going to end well. It's not going to look the way I want it to look. Now I have some options before I close this off. I can hold down my option key, and you'll notice that here at the bottom, what it's telling me to do. Right now it's the pen tool, but if I hold down the option or alt key, it says it's gonna make a corner out of it. So I can now, for the first time, drag that handle. Oops, that's not the way I want it. There we go. I can, let's undo that one more time. There we go. I can drag the handle and get exactly what I want on that one part of the heart without it affecting the other part. So I get it exactly the way I want. Now some of the other options would be, uh, here if I click the pen tool, I click over here to um, click a point, and I click, and I want to move that point before I, or as I'm putting it down. Now I can use the space bar to move that point around, or I'm sorry, the command key, I should say, to move that point around and reshape that point with the command key or control key on Windows to get that point exactly where I want it without having to move, reshape, or undo and redo the whole thing. So the pen tool just got a lot better in CC 2014. As far as drawing, getting a preview, as far as holding down your option or alt key to change what would have been a weird curve point into a corner point, and of course, holding down your command or control key to, if you don't want to close it off exactly where you were going to click, hold down the command key, and that way you can move that point where you want it to be instead of having to do it after the fact. So the pen tool just got a lot better and a lot easier for first-time pen tool users. Okay, so what's next? What's the finale? Let's talk about web. We have brand new CSS extraction capabilities. So I'm going to switch to a different document. And this is the document that's being designed for how we want the web page to look. In other words, this is the prototype. And of course, we need to be able to do this in HTML. So I'm running a couple of programs. Let's go ahead and switch over to them. The first one is Edge Code, which this is our editor. It's kind of a preview. You can download this as a Creative Cloud member. And then we have the actual um, page that is the HTML page that this code is looking at. And they're joined together to update based on this icon. So this is talking to Chrome, saying whatever I do on this side, update this side. All right, so now let's head back to Illustrator. And in Illustrator, what I'm going to do is just basically grab my selection tool. I'm done with the pen tools for now, I'm done with the layers for now. And we're just gonna go ahead and make a selection of this seating area. And when I make a selection of the seating area, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my web workspace. And in my web workspace, I've got a CSS properties panel. And in a CSS properties panel, I'm just going to tell it to generate CSS. And it basically looked at the graphical elements here and generated CSS code for me to use. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that code. And basically, I think I have a copy selected style button there, but I'm just going to go ahead and copy it manually from the keyboard. And now I'll head back over to Edge Code, and we'll bring up the web page as well. And I've got a spot here in Edge Code to paste that CSS. 
So this is all the CSS that Illustrator wrote for me. Now, if we go over here and just do a quick refresh, oh, I forgot to save it. Let's save it first. There we go. Now we do a refresh and there we are. So using the CSS from Illustrator to style my HTML or CSS in my HTML, whether it be external CSS or inside the HTML file right here in Illustrator CC 2014. So those are a few of the new things, the best things, big things inside Illustrator CC. Hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll catch you on the next one.